So I knew that when I started profiling boomers as a cause of our misery, as a cause of our anguish as a country, as a continent, and even parts of the world, I knew that there was going to be some blowback. I did not expect them to be uh, to be dis uh, dispatching such an amateur uh, like the lady who was talking about, oh, Gen X are the cause of the problem. You, you, you have, uh, first of all, we define humanity, especially uh, the, the age that we are in on, uh, two spectacular events. Number one was uh, the Second World War. Number two was colonialism. So everything that happened 20 to 30 years after those two events uh, was uh, an era of reconstruction, of rebuilding after the Second World War, after Hiroshima, uh, after, uh, you know, after colonialism here, there was a lot of fans and then there was an ideological competition between the communism and the capitalism where Fans were dispatched to developing countries to uh, to spearhead them because they wanted to. Uh, they were competing uh, for for attention. They were competing for influence. Uh, the capitalists and the communists, uh, the West and the uh, and and the Soviets, they were competing. And then there was a the fall of the Berlin Wall. Those are the things that de define uh, our 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 times, the times and era that we are in. So for, you, you cannot say that somebody born in 1980 had the same tools, had the same opportunity as somebody who was born in the 1960s or 1940s. 1940s, they, they, they had everything. I told you those guys were living reserve and they come to Nairobi with just a CV, with just an ID. You have a job, you have a mortgage. Hmm? Now, what, what did they do with those, uh, eh, with, with those opportunities? They haven't done anything. Then they were just clubbing. They were just living their best lives. Hmm? Then, the, I, I, you know, I, I saw, uh, you know, a comparison between Nyeri and Kisumu. And somebody was drawing parallels to how Nyeri is so uh, backward looking if you go to it. Because let me tell you the things. I can only talk about Mount Kenya because I am, you know, I have studied the stupidity of the Mount Kenya region, especially the so-called elders, Kikuyu Council of Elders, Church Elders. All of them are stupid beyond measure. So Nyeri, they had a policy, you know, an unwritten rule that yeah, they, they cannot support anyone from outside Nyeri. Now you, when you're outside there, you think that, oh, you, all Mount Kenya people are united. Now Nyeri, they had a principle called Kamwene, that if you are an outsider from, from Nyeri, if you don't have, they have a specific accent, that they will boycott your store. That's why Nyeri has remained behind the way it is. Uh, Akikuyu from Kiambu has a better opportunity of succeeding in Mombasa, in Kisumu or Kakamega than in Nyeri. But you out there, of course, the politicians would not allow this kind of knowledge to, uh, to, you know, to spread in the country because they want to project Mount Kenya. Like now, uh, George Kaluma, he wants to say that hey, Mount Kenya people, mm, coffee, you're being helped by... He's been reading the newspapers. He knows that Deputy President Rigiji is creating an uh, artificial crisis in coffee. But he wants, he wants to suppress that from the collective knowledge because they gain by... Uh, when they are stealing national resources and then they come to pit us against each other. So you understand, those were the issues that were preoccupying the people of Mount Kenya at the time. Well, the people in uh, in the Far East, in South Korea, even North Korea, who are nuclear power, in Japan after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they rebuilt uh, and their companies do <laughs> dominated the world. We are, <laughs> we, are, we are dependent on gadgets from Japan and vehicles from Japan because they used their opportunity of plenty to, to develop. I told you the people of now of uh, uh, Mount Kenya on this other side, now closer to Nairobi, the ones who you call Kiambu Mafia now, they were guiding eh, the peasants, Kikuyu peasants, to go to Gatondo, Ishaweri, where Kenyatta's home, where they took an oath that power will not cross Chania River. So even while people were divided based on communities countrywide, there were still intra Mm, intra-fractional warfare. Can you imagine eh, that we are we are still divided as a country based on colonial uh, demarcations, but still they go out of their way to divide people even more, which is what they've been doing to us as young people. We cannot have conversations that these people want to continue dominating. They want to continue holding on to positions like me. Today I saw Kimani Ishungwa talking about lambasting uh, sports CS above Namwamba. If I had that position, I would create 20,000 jobs in one year without, with no joke because I've done it before. But they still want to hold these key positions. Uh, we've seen the CS of uh, uh, information, Elio Dowalo, clueless as fuck, 
doesn't know shit. He's launching Wi-Fi is his biggest. You know, I can I, I can I can I can uh, share my Wi-Fi from my phone, but them because they are launching a Wi-Fi, it has to be national news. Oh, we are launching Wi-Fi. These guys are crazy. They are living in in the stone age man we, the things are moving so fast for them yeah if i was the minister of trade eh? if i was a cs of trade moses courier i would be creating jobs like ten thousand jobs every year no cap man no cap this thing is not rocket science it's just that boomers they are clueless and they want to hold the positions they want to maintain dominance in your governments in your counties even in your churches eh? what have they left us with they've left us with just white elephants scattered across the country eh, called churches today somebody sent me who oh, said uh, they, they they are raising money to build a new catholic church in thika called saint patrick's there is a church there existing but they want to build another one they come up with a fictitious uh, uh, whatever a budget of 120 million to build a church instead of building hospitals then these same bastards once they get sick they will come and ask people to raise money for them because they want to go for for, for treatment in india this is why i'm telling you boomers are stupid and now that budget 120 million half of it will be guys who will be just uh, chewing money and don't forget the catholic church is the biggest landowner what have they done with all the land that they have they have the primest land in kenya eh? they have or oh, everywhere in kilimani everywhere they have land in cbd everywhere everything eh, when you ask them where do you take your money oh we take it to the vatican no that money is still here so we, <laughs> this, this is the thing the boomers and when we castigate boomers it's not me who has come up with this is a global phenomenon let me show you we are going to start with 2008 baby boomers the gloomiest generation this is an article from a uh, pew research center uh, june 25th 2008 huh? let's go to the other one eh? why millennials distaste for distaste for baby boomers is justified eh? that's uh, daily that's new york post in uh, 2020 huh? let's go to the other one millennials are struggling is it the fault of baby boomers so they, and then they have the preamble there the post-war generation now retiring in luxury uh, stands accused of willful failure to safeguard young people's interests this is scientific I'm not, I'm not i'm not lambasting people because i have come up with this these guys were left with so much but they've done so little look at them today now uh, if you look at this kenya kusha uh, no president ruto goes he attends something and then he speaks he makes a fake promise he thinks we are stupid we don't understand the um, the, the 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 thickness of his uh, uh, of his uh, flowery languages eh? you saw now what they did with uh, mandago mandago has squandered one billion shillings together with uh, his groupies they've, they've embezzled one billion shillings meant to educate meant to nurture the future people who can be productive in this economy and he's he's a hero and these guys are celebrated in churches uh, the churches are creating harambees all these phantom harambees because you know politicians will go and splurge money yeah they'll go and splash eh? all their proceeds of crime there and that has been the dichotomy because be, be, for for boomers uh, in government and in churches because they still here and then they still there and then they go uh, to sanitize on this other side so we are not accusing boomers falsely this is documented that they were left for with a lot of uh, wealth in their hands in kenya now uh, when the colonialists left they left these guys what what have they done they were just appropriating public assets into uh, private hands the people like philip Ndegwas, the guys who the media celebrate oh they are geniuses they are geniuses if you look at the father who was in charge of the privatization commission hmm, which was an idea of who of the world bank who the world bank is who is the same people who are giving us problems today they are they are, they are giving us orders uh, you need to downsize your public service uh, we don't have any debt you didn't know multiple uh, forensic uh, analysis have said we don't have we don't know anyone any money but because the boomers in government want to look for a scapegoat they want to look for people to hide behind as they perpetrate their mm, depravity they, they they have to keep on touting the name eh, donors imf are the ones who are but it's not imf it's the people you've elected but they have to keep on eh, they have now they've dispatched a very amateurish 
a young lady there to eh? her she's within a generation she cannot tell you what her generation has done but her lamentations are more about tamaking and looking for jobs as we are talking about bigger structural and policy interventions